everyone, and welcome to the video. My name is Alex, and today is a guide video. Another one. It's like I'm pumping these out now. <laughs> I, I, was, I was making a. I, it's you know sometimes you feel like one thing. You make like making gameplay videos. The other day you make like guide videos. Like I don't know what I want to make. But today, today's a guide video, and today I'm going to talk about Fiddlesticks uh, because he's been out for a while now, and people have gotten the chance to play him a bit, and I've gotten the chance to play him a little bit, and I've kind of wanted to make a little guide on him for those who haven't gotten the chance to play him, or haven't wanted to play him, or haven't things like or haven't even played the game so if you've never played fiddlesticks or you want to know how to play fiddlesticks a little bit then this is the video for you i'm going to do things a little bit differently than the past videos i've made or past guide videos i'm going to start with the abilities and if you want to skip the abilities because if you already know what they all do or any of the other things that they don't or like the little things that they do they do because sometimes there's little tricks you can do with it, just not like like reading the tooltips or whatever uh you can skip i'll put a i'll put the time that you can skip to right here <laughs> You can skip down, I'll also put a time code down to the beginning of the like other content of the video so you can skip the abilities you already know. But let's get into his abilities. Fiddlesticks, now just to start off, what is Fiddlesticks and who is he? He is our lovable, well he used to be our lovable scarecrow that goes around and jumps and surprises people. He's kind of still the same thing but he's a little bit scarier now uh, since his rework about a month, a month ago? I think it was like a month ago. Um, and now he's pretty cool, he's still kind of the same with a little bit of a twist with a little bit of new things since his rework. And he's a jungler. He can sometimes be, be, be played mid lane. I've got had some success in that, but otherwise he could, he's basically just play jungle. So, so what are his abilities? His first thing we have to talk about is his passive. His passive is a harmless scarecrow. It allows him to uh, basically, if he's, he begins the game with scarecrow effigies instead of his regular ward trinket. Um, these effigies can pretend to be him, and he can also pretend to be them. So if you stand still as Fiddlesticks, he like goes up in a little, a little like a little pose, a little T pose, a little like you know, still different like things, and he'll pretend to be them. They'll pretend to be him. The effigies will, if they're seen by an enemy. But then a certain range, they'll pretend to be fiddlesticks, like flash away, or pretend to ult, or just walk away, and they'll disappear. They're basically effectively wards that you use that, from what I can tell, they pretty much last forever, and they act as if a ward, but they also act as a clone of fiddlesticks or a pet. So they can be targeted by abilities, they can be hit by projectiles and things like that. So they have a really good use outside of just being a ward. At level 6, they get the ability to reveal stealthed wards and stuff like that. Um, they can, they basically act like an oracle lens, if that counts. So you can walk around, check out bushes with them and things like that. They also have a much shorter cooldown than your regular trinket, so you actually place way more of them. In fact, if you're a support fiddlestick, you'll have pretty much the highest ward score ever. I've gotten to like 120 ward score before, so <laughs> you can rack up the ward score and you feel good about yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back, you little shit. Physics Q is called Terrify. Uh, it's your fear. That Essentially, it's the old fear. It fears them and it slows them for 90%. Though there is a new component of it, if you haven't figured it out or found out, is the fearing part applies to your other abilities when you're not seen. So if you're unseen and out, and out of combat, if they're both of those things true, you have to be out of combat for like 2.5 seconds for you to be unseen. You can use your abilities and you cause dread, which is basically the fear, uh, with any of your abilities. So that counts your W, your E, and your ultimate. You can also fear people. And you can fear multiple people. You can't just, you can you don't have to just fear one person, you can fear multiple people. So it helps out with a lot of like engaging and stuff like that. It, it gives you kind of an, an edge and gives you a reason to be like sneaking around and stuff like that. Uh, and it means that you kind of have to focus a little bit more on being hiding in bushes or around the, just like around the bend or behind a wall or something like that. Really the whole surprise part about Fiddlesticks is really uh, accentuated by this passive. Also, if the other part of his terrify is that if something has already been feared, the fear, if you cast Terrify on someone that's already been feared, it does like a bunch of extra damage on top of that. So it's a damaging ability on top of being a CC ability. So keep in mind that if you feared someone, it does a lot of damage. Your W is your old sucking suck suckity suck suck. Uh, Bountiful, it's now called Bountiful Harvest. I don't actually remember what it used to be called. Uh, I think it was just called Drain. Basically now it's an AOE ability within a, a radius around you. You just suck the life out of everything. Just dealing a bit of damage. Tethered enemies are revealed, so anything that wants to go into stealth while being 
drained by you is gonna not be stealth that will be revealed as long as they're being tethered to you. At the end of the channel, you deal extra percentage health damage, or I think extra percentage missing health damage to them. So the lower health they are, the more damage you do at the end of the channel. And if you complete the channel or all targets around you um, have died, uh, the, the cooldown is reduced by 60%. Uh, after you've completed it so you can keep using it over and over and over again. It's your main f clearing tool for jungle. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage to minion waves, unfortunately. It still does like 25% against minions, but jungle creeps and or jungle monsters and things like that deal full damage to them and champions as well. Your E now instead of the old good old oh, the good old crow of old days old, I guess now, uh, is called bounce or not bountiful harvest, called reap. Uh, you have a scythe. It used to have and really all the scythe used to do is just fling little purple bananas at people now It's actually using a scythe for its purpose and to reap their souls or whatever, but it's it does damage It's a, a, a skill shot and it has two, a couple of components first It slows anyone inside of the rate of the damage area But if you hit the like the center of the reticle it silences them for like um, a second and, and a quarter of a a second, pretty much a second, like a second and 20, second, 1.5, 1.25 seconds. That's all it does. I mean, obviously the fear from your Q applies to it if you hit multiple people. Uh, and yeah, pretty straightforward. Your ultimate is called Crow Storm, if you didn't already know. And it's the same, it's the same thing. <laughs> Same thing as always was, it's a crow storm. The dream is to hit like five people with your ultimate from being like hidden away and you just fear them all and you start just sucking the life out of them. And yeah, that's pretty much wraps up all of his abilities. Pretty straightforward, but let's get into kind of how you play Fiddlesticks. So really this is gonna come from my perspective since I, I've been playing Fiddlesticks a little bit here on and off just in norms with my friends and sometimes maybe once or twice in ranked because I was like put in jungle and I thought, well, I just play Fiddlesticks for whatever reason. He's not that much different than he used to be, but he is also a little bit different. You're focusing a lot more on being unseen and, being, and hiding away, waiting for the right moment to use your abilities to kind of surprise the opponent. I mean, it's kind of what you did already, but he, you did it kind of poorly now you have the opportunity to cc the entire enemy team with your ultimate we're gonna do if you're playing jungle if you're playing the footage in the background is gonna be me playing mid but i that's because i was trying to get footage and i my friends wouldn't let me play jungle because we had someone new who only knew how to play warwick so if you're playing jungle and your clear path is gonna usually start from blue or red uh if you start from blue you can pick the blue buff, drag him over a little bit to the gromp, hit the gromp, let it come over to you, and you can suck both of them. You're, they'll both be in range for you to use your Bountiful Harvest on them. Similar with red buff, if you start at red buff, you can get red buff, drag him over a little bit, get the birds, and drag them over. You can have a really fast start for your clear, as long as you get both of that right. It's a bit tricky, you have to kind of get a little bit near... You have to get too, you can't go too close to one camp than the other because other, they, otherwise they'll like leash back to where they were before. But you, if you practice a little bit, you'll get the hang of it. What you're going to do, what you're, the, the ability you're going to level up first is your W in the jungle because it's your jungle clear, it's your clearing ability. It clears the camps really quickly, um, especially since you'll be able to spam it a bunch with the 60% cooldown reduction if you finish it. Your ganking, however, can't be, is not really great before level 6 because unless you're going to lead the enemy into you, it's like while you're hiding in a bush or something like that you can't really get a cc off or fear you can like try to walk up to them and get the fear the fear doesn't have a huge range on it but sometimes you can get land ganks off so you can hide in like the top lane bushes wait for the enemy to come by or hiding in the bot lane bushes i mean for like mid ganks are kind of like hit or miss depending on where they are so just be aware that your level six ganks are gonna be a little bit poo really the bottom line to ganking and stuff like that is being sneaky as much as possible warding a whole bunch uh like using your effigies properly to scan for wards use them to see where the enemy jungler is and things like that and just overall just trying to be as surprising as possible thinking a little bit outside the box of where you're going to gank from maybe instead of like ganking from the late from the, the river bushes you go to the enemy raptors and come from behind or something like that thinking kind of like how am i gonna surprise my opponent is the best way possible matchups now jungle matchups in jungle are a bit weird because you don't are always fighting your jungle opponent usually on like mid lane which i talk about a lot whereas like matchups are kind of important to know but matchup in jungle a little bit weird it depends on the, the jungler and what they like to do whether like to counter jungle a bunch or something like that and it really does depend on what jungler they're playing and a combination of things i'll just point out some junglers that i've had trouble with as fiddlesticks because of just how aggressive they can be in, in the jungle and things like that I'll, I'll i'll use a blanket statement of anyone that likes to fight you early things like lee sin or kane or yi or things like that they'll probably come and try to kick 
pick your butt and they will probably because you have no way to get away from them they'll save their uh, gap closers and things like that for you you basically have to waste flash and stuff like that if they're gonna if they're gonna invade your jungle so be aware that you before well at any time in the game if you can't get the jump on them if you can't surprise someone then you're probably going to lose the fight because you're just innately squishy and you have no escapes whatsoever you have your fear which is useful but it doesn't last a huge amount of time. A couple of champs that I've had trouble with is Lee Sin and Jax. Lee Sin, he just likes to fool, like any, it seems like every Lee Sin that I fight in the jungle is like the master Lee Sin. They do all the fancy like kicks and stuff and war jumping and stuff like that. And when I have a Lee Sin on my team, they're just like, what is a ward? But yeah, Lee Sin will be an issue for you because well, he doesn't really care if you feared him away because he can land his like his little fart cloud on you and he does a lot of damage early on to you because you have no health whatsoever. Jax is annoying because of his gap closing and stuns and just being able to stick to you really well. Anyone with really a lot of CC, so, so any sort of tank jungler like Maokai or Sejuani or anyone like that can really give you trouble. Anyone, really anyone can give you trouble. You don't want to find you don't want to be found, you want to find them. That is the real the real issue. Oh, and Shaco, oh my god. <laughs> Triple Shaco's gonna walk all over you because he's just as sneaky as you are, even more so because of stealth and boxes and stuff like that. The only real advantage you have is that you have way more access to wards than they do because your effigy has a like significantly lower cooldown than everyone else's trinkets and stuff like that. So using your effigies to the is an advantage that you have to get used to using. Um, using the effigies to put them in you know, the other, the enemy's jungle and things like that, trying to find out where they are and things. Maybe taking the fight to them is much more of an approach, and I've actually sometimes been successful, like, being more aggressive, putting my wards in the jungle, or the enemy's jungle, than putting them my own. Now, there's a few things that can make your life a little bit easier if you're having trouble with someone being in your jungle. The first thing is ward, ward, ward everything. So if you actually can't, if you're too afraid to go invading into the enemy's jungle, which is, you know, fair enough, I say that, you know, maybe try it once in a while but if you're too afraid to go in there and you want to stick to your side of the jungle ward everywhere use your effigies as much as possible buy control wards for important spots in your jungle like red and blue um try to take control of dragons as best as you can stick around there because you have the most advantage with more teammates obviously be aware of where your enemy jungle is if they went top lane go to dragon go try to gank bot lane get dragon or something like that just trying to if you if you really don't want to be around your enemy jungler then don't <laughs> try to find them and Keep track of where they are using your superior wardage. Being unseen is your biggest advantage. Fearing multiple people is like really strong because it's a it's a team wide CC and if if you land it properly, um, very very strong. And that's kind of what you want to do. It can really turn an, an engage around. You can counter engage with it. You can just turn a whole team fight sometimes by just landing a five man ultimate on them and fearing all five of them and starting to <laughs> suck all them. You know their their uh, their proverbial lives like a d the bottom line for that is being sneaky and just trying not to engage with the enemy as much as possible as long as you're not trying to be found if you want to find someone that's your prerogative and you can really get the surprise on them if you have your ultimate really surprising people with your ultimate is what you're supposed to be doing and then just kind of running away after that what should you build on fiddlesticks is pretty straightforward because you want survivability because you're ulting into a bunch of people and at the same time you want to do some damage so here's a there's a several items that i like to build uh that i found have been successful for me. Uh, obviously, the first one is Zonias. Zonias, 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 Zonias. I mean, <laughs> if you're gonna be a suicidal, suicidal demon scarecrow, just, just like, like plopping yourself into the enemy. I mean, just like take me, and then just. <laughs> What else would you need? But it's something that makes you invis invincible and also still lets your ult tick on them as long as it's going. So Zonia's is the first thing I usually buy because you are really squishy. You're going to try to get your ultimate onto as many people as possible. You want it to last the full duration. So if you have something to kind of save yourself, hoping to freaking good goshness that your your teammates follow up on your ultimate. Because if you if you ulted the five people and you Zonia's, you're just sitting there going, well, I've made a horrible decision. Hi. <laughs> Some other items that I like to build are Leandries and Rylai's. Both of them are health items and Leandries, they have like useful passives for your abilities. Uh, Leandries is great because it's a it's it's becoming one of more of my favorite items to build, like secondary or third or tertiary items because it gives health and 
pretty much the same amount of AP that most of the other items give. I'm building over Morellas usually because of uh, its cost efficiency and how much it gives as opposed to Morellas. Because uh, not every game you're going to need Morellas and it, it's like, well, I'm, I'm uh, all the items cost so much for how much they give you. So Landris is a great item to build. Rylize is great because not only does it give you health and AP, but it gives you a really useful passive. You, you could talk about the legitimacy of giving a 20% slow, but I would argue that it, it does give you more damage because if you're draining someone, it causes them to be in your drain for longer, it causes them to be in your ult longer, so there's more ticks on them and things like that. Really piling on the health and AP and other passives that are useful for all of your abilities. Obviously building things like Rabidons and other damaging items later on. Also, obviously, you're building items for certain situations like Morellos if you have a lot of enemies that heal a lot, like Aatrox and Vladimir and things like that, or Drave. Uh, you want to build something like Morellas or even a Soraka. If you have a Soraka, you definitely want to build Morellas because you just don't want her healing everyone as you're like freaking like going crazy on them. That's pretty much all I had to say about Fiddlesticks. Hopefully this imparted some sort of knowledge. I'm, I'm trying to change up things and do things differently. I decided to put the abilities at the front because I figured I can talk more about what Fiddle does if you understand how his abilities work, if you didn't already. And yeah, the, pretty much the bottom line, the, <laughs> I keep saying the bottom line, but the bottom line for Fiddlesticks is be sneaky and scare the fuck out of everyone. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> like, you, you want to never be seen whatsoever. The most, uh, the, 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 the most successful I've been with Fiddle is just like, and, and most, and even for when I'm playing mid lane, it's just like, well, I'm not gonna do much here. I want to be surprising as possible. I want to be unseen. I want to come from nowhere. I'm gonna leave or go somewhere else, hide somewhere and wait and just wait for the most opportune moment to ult in and kill everyone. So you have to be really patient with him. At first, you have to understand that like patience is definitely something you need to learn with Fiddlesticks because not every opportunity you could ult is a good opportunity. Just be kind of like, play him a bit, a bit, little bit, get used to him. I don't think he's like the meta champion that everyone was looking for after they reworked him, but he's definitely a lot better with some of the tools they gave him. If you did enjoy the video and you got something out of it, hit the like button. You leave a comment down below tell me if you if you have up until this point if you have been playing fiddlesticks what have you been enjoying about him did he did the changes they gave him have any kind of it's kind of been like a month or so as uh, since the rework or has it like maybe a few weeks i don't know C time is an illusion now i don't really understand it anymore because i'm indoors all the time so have you been enjoying fiddlesticks you've been playing him a lot if you don't do you want to play him now yeah so let me know down in the comments below give me some feedback also hit the subscribe button if you want to see more stuff from me um i I put up lead content and guides like this and other gameplay stuff, funny, bon funny gameplay montages or whatever I feel like doing in the future. Oh, and the bell. You hit the bell for, for, the, for the notifications, the little dingling, ring ding. Oh, I also stream sometimes. <laughs> I'm bad at this. I also stream sometimes on Twitch. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I've tried to stick to a schedule, but lately it's been really hard, so I kind of stream whenever I want to. I try to get around like the evening time, so if you're around in the evening, you see, and you can you follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash uh, you can get a if you follow there, you can get a notification when I start the stream, and yeah. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!